Praise for Zed Arden. Rest arm. Good morning, fellow comrades, member of parliament, Nikki Ashton, member of Legislative Assembly, Danielle Adams, Mayor Colleen Smook, and all members and guests joining us virtually for the 2020 Remembrance Day commemorative service. I am Comrade Raylene Jonasson, President of the Burntwood River Branch, number 244, of the Royal Canadian Legion here in Thompson, Manitoba, and I will be your host for this year's service of remembrance. As the Royal Canadian Legion always supports our veterans, we also continuously care for our home communities. By following the provincial COVID-19 safety guidelines and protocols, we have chosen a virtual gathering of commemoration and look forward to sharing it with you today. We acknowledge we are on Treaty 5 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Together, we once again can and will remember our veterans, their contributions, their sacrifices to our country in conflicts around the world. This year in particular, we recognize and remember a significant turning point in the history of the world. The 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. In that world, wide conflict alone, more than one million Canadians from various cultural and ethnic backgrounds and from various walks of life, including more than 3,000 Métis, Inuit, and other Indigenous Canadians served more than 55,000, were wounded, and 45,000 died. This year was also the 80th anniversary of our Battle of Britain, where more than 100 Canadian pilots in the Royal Canadian Air Force and other allied squadrons helped defend the skies over England, and an untold number of Canadians served in ground crews, including on bomber and coastal commands. As Sir Winston Churchill, then British Prime Minister, said on August 20th of 1940, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. This statement, then referring to the Allied efforts of the Air Force in the Battle of Britain, still reigns true today. No matter their background or how or where our veterans served, and no matter where we may find ourselves today, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we take pause to remember as a profound and serene quiet falls over our communities for two minutes of silence. Let us never forget the sacrifices of our ancestors and veterans. At this time, I will ask Corporal Sample of the Thompson RCMP to march on the Canadian flag, following which we will hear the national anthem, O Canada, played through a recording from the R.D. Parker music program. Corporal Sample.
Please be seated. Members of Parliament, Nikki Ashton, was unable to be with us today. However, she was able to share a brief video message with her address on behalf of the Government of Canada. Today we remember, we remember those who fought for us, who paid the ultimate sacrifice and never came back. We support our veterans. We support Indigenous veterans, many of whom fought and came back to face racism and discrimination. And today we recommit to the same struggles that so many fought for and died for, an end to fascism and hate. And we recommit to building a dream that so many dreamed of, peace. Peace in our community, across our country and around the world. Today and in these challenging times, I hope we can take some time to remember and to gain inspiration from the way in which so many worked together and looked out for one another, lest we forget. Thank you, MP Ashton. At this time, I will ask a member of Legislative Assembly, Daniel Adams, to address today's service on behalf of the province of Manitoba. Daniel Adams. Greetings to everybody, and I want to thank the Legion for inviting me and providing a space for us to remember our veterans and service members virtually. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 5 territory, traditional land to NCN and home to the Métis. Today we join Canadians across the country in remembering and honouring our veterans, including Indigenous, BIPOC and LGBTQ2 plus Canadians who served our country. These veterans made remarkable sacrifices to uphold freedom, justice, and peace, and we owe them a, the deepest grit of gratitude and respect. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic this year, we cannot gather to pay our respects in person, but we will hold them in our hearts and, and surround them with love as we gather for a moment of silence as a nation to remember their honor and sacrifice. I know this year is especially difficult for veterans and their families. Without public ceremonies, it's more important than ever that we recommit ourselves to passing on their stories of courage and sacrifice to the younger generation and to continue to fight for better care for our veterans and seniors. Let's join together, remember and give thanks. Let us, let's forget. Thank you. Emily Adams. I would now like to invite our mayor of the city of Thompson, Colleen Smook, to address today's service. Good morning, everybody, on uh, this different Remembrance Day 2020. Um, it's uh, very important that we acknowledge in light of our, the pandemic and everything that goes on around us, the importance of us all being to ga able to gather virtually. As I said when I got injured the other day, COVID has given us the ability to still come together and still have the, the gathering feel that we need. 
And I think in Thompson, it's very important that we remember we have our own veterans here that out of the Legion branch. We have our Thompson Fire and Emergency Services. We have our RCMP. We have all those together that come together in our times of need and that have over the years. Thompson's a very unique place. And um, I would also like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 5 land and that we are all treaty people. It is very important that we all come together at this time. And uh, on behalf of my fellow city councillors and all the administration and staff at the city of Thompson in uh, these times, it's, it's so important that everybody comes together. Everybody, uh, for the most part, has done a remarkable job. So let us remember our veterans today. It's their day today, so let's uh, not forget them. Uh, rest in peace and all the ones that are with us. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Smook. Under normal conditions, we would be pleased to present the R.D. Parker Senior Band to play for a brief period of musical reflection. Not able to join us or attend in person, these future leaders with their teachers in school took the time to put together an amazing tribute to be included in today's service. It is with great appreciation to the R.D. Parker Music Department that we present the piece they have chosen entitled Along the Beaches of Normandy. On June 6, 1944, Canadian forces, along with their American and British allies, landed on the five beaches along a 50-mile stretch of the heavily fortified coast of France's Normandy region. Codenamed Operation Overlord, the Normandy landings marked the beginning of the liberation of German-occupied France and laid the foundation for the Allied victory on the Western Front. Written by composer Tyler Grant when he was just 13 years old, Along the Beaches of Normandy is a musical tribute to the heroes of World War II. The piece portrays the intensity of D-Day landings with its driving melody and musical efforts meant to present or represent the sounds of the battlefield. The melody then transforms into a hymn allowing for a moment of reflection and remembrance at the tragic loss of life experienced that day throughout the war. This is Along the Beaches of Normandy.
Thank you, R.D. Parker. While exact statistics are difficult to determine, the rate of Indigenous participation in Canada's military efforts has been impressive. These determined volunteers were often required to overcome many challenges to serve in uniform. From learning a new language and adapting to cultural differences, to having to travel great distances from their communities just to enlist. In some areas, as many as one in every three able-bodied men would enlist in the First World War alone. And in some communities, every man between 20 and 35 years of age enlisted. <clears throat> A variety of reasons motivated Indigenous recruits to sign up, from seeking employment or adventure to wanting to uphold a tradition that had been in their ancestors' fight along the British in earlier military efforts, like the War of 1820 and the South African War. When the Second World War erupted, many Indigenous people again answered the call to duty. Over 3,000 First Nations, including an unknown number of Métis Inuit and other Indigenous recruits, answered the call for the Royal Canadian Navy, Royal Canadian Air Force, and most notably, the Canadian Army. Indigenous recruits brought valuable skills with them to the military. Patience, stealth, markmanship were well-honed traits for those who had come from communities where hunting was a regular part of daily life. Many of these recruits became snipers and reconnaissance scouts, earning at least 50 Indigenous soldiers' decorations for outstanding bravery. At this time, in memory of these recruits, Elder Jack Robinson will conduct a pipe ceremony.
Jimmy Jim Witch Elder Robinson and his assistant drummer Brooke. At this time, we will hear the poem in Flanders Fields, read by Captain Daniel Closey and set to the music Abide With Me, as recorded by the Thompson Community Band for today's services. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Colosi. With the end of World War II in 1945, also came the end of the Battle of the Atlantic, which has been called the longest, largest, and most complex naval battle in history. In fact, Sir Winston Churchill was quoted as saying, I was even more anxious about this battle than I had been about the glorious air fight called the Battle of Britain. As a small island country, the United Kingdom was highly dependent on the imported goods for regular life, and much more so in order to survive and fight in World War II. In essence, the Battle of the Atlantic was a tonnage war in which the Allies struggled to supply Britain, and the Axis attempted to prevent or slow the flow of merchant shipping that enabled Britain to keep fighting. Canada's merchant navy was vital to the Allied cause during World War II. Information obtained by Britain's agents regarding German shipping movements actually led Canada to conscript all her merchant vessels two weeks before actually declaring war. With the Royal Canadian Navy taking control of all shipping on August 26, 1939. In the beginning, Canada had 38 ocean-going merchant vessels, and by the end of World War II, over 400 cargo ships had been built in Canada. More than 1,600 merchant sailors were killed on the over, and over 70 merchant vessels were lost. At the end of the war, Rear Admiral Leonard Murray, then Commander-in-Chief Canadian Northern Atlantic, remarked, the Battle of the Atlantic was not won by any Navy or Air Force. It was won by the courage, fortitude, and determination of the British and Allied Merchant Navy. The last post is a bugle call that originally signals that the final sentry post had been inspected 
and that the camp was secure for the night. In addition to normal garrison use, the last post had another function at the close of the day of battle. It signaled to those who were still out and wounded or separated from their comrades that the fighting was done and to follow the sound of the call to the find safety and rest. In Remembrance Day services around the Commonwealth nations, the last post carries two generally unexpressed purposes. The first is to imply the calling of the spirits of the fallen to the cenotaph, where they will and can have the last find, and, and at last find rest. The second is to symbolically end the day so that the two minutes of silence becomes a vitalized night vigil after which the rouse is blown to start the new day. Please rise if you are able and join me in remembering our fallen comrades. In two minutes of silence, Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Now at this time, I would like to invite Father Guna to come forward and deliver a prayer and benediction for today's service. Father Guna. Good morning, everyone. We remember in faith all who have served and continue to serving in our armed forces, especially those who have died and those wounded in battle. We also pray for healing and pray for peace, that one day all people will lay down their arms and embrace one another as brothers and sisters in one human family. So let's join together to pray to our Heavenly Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you fashioned each of us in your divine image and likeness to live in the communion you share as Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be with us as we reflect and pray this morning. May this Remembrance Day, thoughts and prayers everywhere help move our world one step closer to the peace of your kingdom. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, Prince of Peace and Lord. Amen. And now let us listen to the word of God this morning. I have taken the gospel from the gospel of St. John. Jesus said, I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, for us, Remembrance Day presents a unique opportunity to meditate on the way of peace. God calls us to look to Jesus who is the Prince of Peace. In the life and teachings of Jesus, we see that God establishes peace in this world in an unconventional way. Jesus does not enter into physical battle or in order to defeat the enemies of God. Instead, Jesus chooses the way of nonviolence. Jesus lays down his life and dies at the hand of God's enemies in order to defeat evil. Only then does God rise Jesus from the dead in the victory of over sin and death. In Jesus we see the perfect example of humble obedience, sacrificial love, and life-giving peace. With this in mind, Jesus' words in the John's Gospel come into sharp focus. Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, even so I am sending you. We are God's sent ones, ambassadors for Christ, commissioned by the Holy Spirit to announce good news of God's peace. But what is more, we are called to embody God's peace in the world. God is leading us to be his peacemakers. So on this day of remembrance, let us seize the opportunity and prayerfully take to heart the radical message of Prince of Peace and follow his way of reconciling love. Let us remember the ways in which we can serve God's peacekeepers throughout our schools, homes, and our communities.
Thank you. Thank you, Father Guna. They shall not, <clears throat> they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. This year, due to the global pandemic, we will only be laying a few wreaths for the dignitaries we have present today. They remember of the re they remember remainder of the wreaths that have been sponsored by our businesses and individuals in the community have been pre-positioned at our cenotaph today on their behalf. The wreath representing the Government of Canada has been laid in advance on behalf of the Member of Parliament, Nikki Ashton. Next, I would like Captain Daniel Colosi to please lay a wreath on behalf of the Canadian Armed Forces, including the Royal Canadian Navy, the Canadian Army, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and the Merchant Navy. Next, I would like Elder Jack Robinson to please lay a wreath on behalf of all First Nations, Inuit, and Métis veterans. Miigwech Elder Jack. Next, I would like the member of Legislative Assembly, Daniel Adams, to please lay a wreath on behalf of the province of Manitoba. Now, if we could, Mayor Colleen Smook, please lay a wreath on behalf of the city of Thompson.
I will now lay a wreath on behalf of the Canadian Royal Canadian Legion. Next, if I could have Comrade Debbie Smith, if you could please lay a wreath on behalf of the Royal Canadian Legion's Ladies Auxiliary. And now if I could have Corporal Sample please present the wreath for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The remainder of the wreaths that are around the cenotaph for today's services of remembrance are sponsored by businesses and individuals from in and around Thompson. We will read a brief list of these businesses and individuals now as they are not able to be here to present their wreaths in person. The list is in alphabetical order. First Thompson Scouts, 737 Squadron Royal Canadian Air Cadets, Baco's Bar and Grill, Best Western Thompson, Bills, Lock and Key, Boardman Northland Funeral Homes, Bob's Towing, Boss Auto, Braden McMurdo, Burntwood Custom Builders, Burntwood Elementary School, Burntwood Hotel and Thompson Inn, Can Do Plumbing Services, Canadian Imper Imperial Bank of Commerce, Canadian Tire Thompson, Communities Economic Development Fund, Crazy Pete's Trading Post, Fast Gas Thompson, Friuli Apartment Rentals, Gardwine Thompson, Giant Tiger Thompson, Girl Guides of Canada Thompson, Hayes Auto Body and Glass, Kendall and Padia, Hopefully I don't make that bad. KNC Electric, Knights of Columbus, third degree, Knights of Columbus, fourth degree, Leo's Home Decorating, Lama Janitorial Services, Lockers Real Estate, Mama Weetuck Friendship Center, McLean Engineering, Manitoba Liquors and Lotteries, Manitoba Métis Federation, Thompson Local, Manitoba Métis Federation, Thompson Region, MDS Aerotest Corporation, Mystery Lake Hotel, North Star Air, Northern Denture Clinic Limited, Northern Lights First Aid Training Center, Northern Regional Health Authority, Northland Tire, Pratt's Food Services, Quality Inn and Service and Suites, RA Distributing, Red Septic Service, Remax Thompson, Rick's Marine, Richstone Financial, Rotary Club of Thompson, 
Royal Canadian Mounted Police, School District of Mystery Lake, Sedark Welding Supplies, Sikh Society of Thompson, Sling Choker Manufacturing, Smoot Contractors, Thompson Auto Wash, Thompson Chamber of Commerce, Thompson Citizen, Thompson Co-op, Thompson Firefighters Association, Thompson Ford, Thompson Golf Club, Thompson Labor Committee, Thompson Lions Club, Thompson Professional Firefighters Association Local 2200, Thompson Recycling Center, Thompson's Regional Airport Authority, Thompson's Teacher Association, Thompson's Veterinary Clinton Clinic, Twin Motors Thompson, Tyler and Jenny Cameron, United Steel Workers Local 6166, United Steel Workers Local 8223, United Steel Workers Organiza Organization of Active Retirees, United, uh, University College of the North, University of Manitoba Northern Social Work Program, Valley Manitoba Operations. There are many supporters for this uh, day and we appreciate each and every one of them. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks as the president of our Burntwood River Branch 244 and my executive committee, we offer these thanks to all of our sponsors and to all of the community members who have supported the Poppy and Remembrance Day campaign in this year that has been so challenging for so many. Now in keeping with Canadian Forces and Legion tradition, we will close this year's service of remembrance with playing of God Save the Queen, played by recording with the R.D. Parker Senior Band. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us virtually for this year's Service of Remembrance. We hope to be able to gather once again in person with you next year as we have in the past. Please stay safe, lest we forget. Great, present arm. Great, to the left. All right.